Yeah, I mean, just about any driver that has experience will tell you, if you've gotten to the point where you think you know everything, you need to get out of it because it's constantly, between the rules and regulations, it, I mean, and just the equipment, everything's always constantly changing. Keep up on everything. Welcome to Life of the Mile, delivered by Freightworks, one of America's fastest growing podcasts actually produced by truck. Indicted to tell stories. Compelling driver stories. I need to do something big. Insightful like industry us. experts. All here, right now. This is Life by the Mile, delivered by Freightworks. I'm your host, Butch Maltby, and today we've got, you're not going to want to miss it, an incredible dive in the life of professional driver, Sean O'Malley. He's uh, a veteran. He's been around the block. He's driven for many years. If you've ever wanted to hear unvarnished, up close, and personal what driving is all about, you're going to want to stay tuned for this entire time. Don't, don't, don't leave. In the meantime, also make sure that you subscribe, like, share, and engage. That's how Life of the Mile delivered by Freightworks grows. So, Sean, I saw you in the driver's lounge this morning. And as soon as I saw the hat and the shirt, I said, we got to get him on a podcast. And I was able to snag you. We were able to get you before you uh, went out on the road today. Absolutely. So uh, it's, it's, it's good, good to have you. And, uh, you know, we're just going to talk about a handful of, handful of things. Uh, you, you said you've watched podcasts before here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of what drew me into the company. You know, my son works for him, uh, Freight Works down locally in Gulfport. And, he got talking to me about the company, and I just started looking into him. It took about three months to really weigh all my options and look at it, everything about the company. And I mean, I dug deep and really didn't find anything wrong. So <laughs> I came out and met with everybody out here, and then decided to come on board. That, that is so good. Now let's let's talk a little bit about uh, about you. Where, where were you born? Well, do I have to tell you? Yes. All right. I originally am. Uh, born and raised in New Jersey. Okay. Don't like to tell people that. But. Okay. Well, yeah. We, we when we were talking earlier, one thing that I'm pretty certain of is is New Jersey's not a a, a place that you want to go back and live. No, right? no, no. Okay. It, when I grew up in New Jersey, it was a really nice state, nice area. But it just I went in the Marine Corps for nine years, and when I got out, I lived in a farming area, which a lot of people don't believe New Jersey has farms, but. <laughs> um, and it all the farms got bought out, so I was like, "No, nah, I'm just going to stay in North Carolina." Actually, has a lot of dairy farms. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, it's I a big Jersey it, cows, <laughs> Jersey cows, and and Holstein cows. Yeah. I I used to uh, yeah, years ago. I, I I spent a couple of summers with an uncle on a dairy farm in Easton, Pennsylvania, oh, in the okay. Allentown, Bethlehem right, East area. Far. Yeah, which is not far. Phillipsburg is right right, right there across the way. All right. Well, and uh, thank you for your service. You I went into the Marine Corps. It. Yes, sir. And what did you do? Um, I, well, the whole time in there, I was with the military police. And oh, so you I, saw a lot. Yeah. I, well, I, <laughs> I always tell everybody when I meet other Marines, because Marine Corps is a really tight organization. I mean, when you meet somebody out on the road that has a hat or T-shirt, you're automatically friends with them. And, you know, I, they always ask you, what would you do? And I was like, with, with the military police, the one thing everybody hated. <laughs> Well, because you were you were an act of authority. It's a little bit like a driver manager with drivers, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. got a driver manager that's taken hold of your life. But, you know, we appreciate your service. And we want to make sure, by the way, I'll make a, a note of this. When we get around to doing our Veterans Day celebrations, we're going to do some interviews with Freightworks drivers. We'll want to make sure we, we okay. tap into that with you. How did you get into driving? Well, um, I think I touched on that with you earlier, but it, um, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I was going to get into law enforcement, and at the time, um, the federal government had mandated all the police departments and and all that um, had to raise their. Uh, they were uh, becoming more diverse, and it created right, yeah, some exactly. challenges for you. Okay, yeah. okay. So I. I've so always, I, I always wanted to drive a truck. Me okay. My dad, growing up, he would bring me to the truck stops. We'd have dinner. And you did? Just, oh, yeah, just so we could see the truck. You trucks. can get some good food at truck stops, oh, can't yeah. you? Yep. yep. Do you have a favorite truck stop that you eat at? 
not really, because really. the truck stops have changed so much since okay. I started. Do you have little it. restaurants along the way that you ever stop at, or not really? Not yet. <laughs> do, do you do you eat do you eat in in, in the cab or? Yeah, I, I bring most of the time because I'm only out seven days, so I I bring most of the food with me and drinks and all that, and I you know try to conserve how much I spend on the road, and you know I just kind of kick back and relax and make the sandwich or. Do, do you have a pet you travel with or no? No, I don't. I I have five dogs at the house, and you I have keep, five. Yeah, I got five dogs, three horses, and five goats. <laughs> you do? Yeah. So you've got like a little petting zoo. Oh yeah. There and about fourteen cats. Those are my wives. <laughs> fourteen cats. Yeah. Now let me get this straight. You've got how many dogs? Five dogs. And how many goats? Uh, five. And how many cats? I got fourteen. And how many horses? Three. Do you have any other animals on the way? Uh, I got three chickens. <laughs> you got chickens? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the chickens, they keep getting picked off by coyotes and hawks and owls and everything. So they, I'll get them up to 10, then I'll go back down and go back and forth. But I just like having them for the eggs, fresh eggs and yeah, all that. But yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're a very, we, we're a very animal-friendly company. Oh, yeah. You, you know that there are a lot of trucking logistics firms that don't like pets. Right. Uh, we've got everything from, you know, cats, dogs, and even a, a, a couple that are OTR drivers that travel with six ferrets. Yeah, I've heard that one. <laughs> That's pretty incredible, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can just imagine them in there uh, all over the place. So you, you got into driving, and, uh, and, and so you were doing mostly LTL? Yeah, I, I started out. I started out delivering restaurant goods for a company called MBM out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, okay. and I ran up and down the East Coast, and that was kind of the extent of my um, over the road. And then I didn't care for the company too much, but I got my experience and aided, mm-hmm. and then I started driving for a gas tanker company and um, worked for, for them for a few years, and kind of got out of that, and that's that's when I got into the LTL side, and I did. For a lot of years, I did local pickup and deliveries and all that, and um, then I got into the line haul side of that, and I'd been doing that for about 18 years with the last company I drove for. And, you know, it, it works out really well, but it's very boring because you go, like, I, I actually literally ran the same run for 18 years. Okay. Everybody so you knew where everything was along knew, the way. I knew where every bump on the road was. And right. <laughs> right. And, and you know, we've talked to some drivers before. Tell me what you think about this. And they'll say, you got to be really careful not to become too familiar or feel like you know everything. You're always learning, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just about any driver that has experience will tell you if, if – you've gotten to the point where you think you know everything you need to get out of it because it's constantly between the rules and regulations i mean and just the equipment everything's always constantly changing and new innovations coming out so you gotta keep up on everything (laughs) now sean tell tell me exactly how you came to know about freight works it was through your son or or how did that work yeah my son got hired on with him and he really liked the company the people and i started looking into it and like i said i I started watching your podcast, and, you know, you get to know everybody. And now you're in one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know, just everybody I heard on the podcast, you can tell they spoke from the heart. You know, it's not something made up, you know. And when I got on here, I, you know, when I came up to just talk to everybody in the company, you know, it just felt right at home. And, and now you don't find that in trucking companies anymore because uh, – what changed? Did it used to be that way and it changed? Or what? What? I mean, get, give us a driver's perspective. By the way, this is Life by the Mile delivered by Freightworks. I'm Butch Malpy, the host. Sean O'Malley, he's a professional driver. And we're just having a conversation and letting you uh, listen in. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, make comments, engage, help us build the audience. So, do you, do you think, Sean, things have changed? Oh, it's it's like changed. what's changed. Paint the picture for people that don't know what's changed it, in the marketplace. It's I mean, in trucking itself, it's changed drastically because um, when I first started out, all the drivers were real tight. I mean, everybody looked out for each other. If somebody broke down on the side of the road. You automatically got on the radio and said, hey, driver, you need help. You know, you'd stop and help them if you had to. But now nobody cares about anybody out there on the road it's 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 gotten really 
kind of cold you know it used to be a real good camaraderie and you know everybody enjoyed trucking back then but now it's kind of gotten to a real industry that you know i mean it's still a lot better than a lot of jobs but <laughs> but you know there's just a lot has changed with it and companies have gotten more technical and and a lot of a lot of it's the dot regulations you know they've just gotten out of hand with you know they're tying our hands to where we can't do our job. Well, and you know? people don't realize how regulated the industry oh, yeah. is, do they? I, I tell people we're more regulated than airline pilots, you know, um, just on everything we do. I mean, we're, we're we're told when we can sleep, when we can eat, when we can, I mean, and it, it it it's kind of gotten. Uh, I don't want to say totally miserable, but it, it's getting bad. Well, we want you to be happy oh, here yeah. at Freight Works. Oh yeah, and I. I been really happy with everybody and um, you know everybody's looking out for you and that's a big part of it you know they well and so so many companies we were talking about this recently so many companies say the same things right when they market they oh, say yeah. your family yep. you're not going to be a number we'll give you good miles we'll value your home time you'll have a good truck it'll be safe you know what i'm saying oh, like yeah. every everybody's yep. pretty much saying the same on, thing on the back door almost every trailer it's always you know come join our family you know we treat you like family um we have we have top pay top benefits top and it's like okay how do you rate how do you judge top pay <laughs> yeah <laughs> and well it's, it's, it seems like it's one of the reasons you know i used to have a little office over there in the office building right but I, I said, you know what? I want to be close to the driver's lounge because I want to get to know drivers. Because right. I, yep. Sean, I didn't, I didn't have any background in trucking and logistics. And sometimes yeah. when I'm here on a weekend, uh, a driver comes in, they'll yeah, see me maybe with a dress shirt or something, and they think I can help get their truck fixed quicker, and I can't. <laughs> I don't even know what they're talking about right. a lot of times when they talk about their truck being broken. Yeah. But you know what? There is a commitment to care here, and people really want to you know, show love in, in, in pra practical, practical right. ways. Right. When you, uh, when, when you drive, uh, and, and through, through the years, have, have you seen some, I mean, hard situations? I mean, every driver sees accidents and. Oh yeah. I, I, I've actually been very fortunate. I, um, I've been driving almost 32 years now and never had a reportable accident i bumped a couple cars and that is lots. fun that is wonderful yeah but um yeah you know what freight works wants a lot of drivers like you yeah but, so we're the rest of them yeah <laughs> they're out there you know I, a lot of people have gotten out of a lot of the experienced drivers have gotten out of it because of all the rules and regulations and that. yeah they're just tired of it you know it, it's restraining you from getting your job done but you know, with no reportable accidents, if you had to share a couple of the principles that have helped you achieve that, you know, we know it's God's help, but what are some of the principles that have helped you get to that place? I mean, what are some just real practical suggestions for new drivers? Well, I know, I know Freight Works might not like me saying this part, but, you know, I, I believe in keeping with the flow of traffic. You know, a lot of companies, they want you to stay with a lower speed, but when you do that, you create conflicts with a lot of vehicles out on the road. And, I mean, a lot of people will flip you the bird because they think you're messing with them. And, but if you keep up with the flow of traffic, you can watch everything around you and you can kind of anticipate what people are doing. Okay. Um, well, that's obviously as long as it's all within what's legal. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So what would be another principle? Um, just, you know, keep your following distance. I, I don't believe in extreme following distances because when you do that people are constantly cutting in front of you you know because they think that big safety zone is for them to move in front of you and they'll pull right almost take your bumper off you know coming in front of you but yeah you, know, you just you try to back off i mean you with experience you know how long it takes you to stop and all that so you you kind of judge your following distance by that and a, a lot of pedestrians that are in cars they don't realize no. what it takes to stop a truck, do they? No, they don't. And and if they did and they ever saw the catastrophic damage from not keeping the distance, they, they wouldn't be doing it. Because that's, I mean, that's one thing with years of driving. You see the wrecks that you see. I mean, cars, you don't even know what make or model it was. And, you know, there was, could have been a family in there and, you know. 
So it, it's it's important to maintain safety on the road because one, you know, if you have a wreck, a bad wreck, somebody's dying more than likely. <laughs> it's probably not going to be you, but you know, you don't want to ever face that and re- right. you know, right, have to live with that. Right, it's so. a it's a huge responsibility to be a, a professional driver. Absolutely. So, and, and somebody that that doesn't take that into consideration they they really don't need to be on the road you know it is it's a total responsibility and you're in charge of that truck you know so well you know our our podcast is not uh political in its orientation of course the company was founded in biblical principles and we're patriotic and we're conservative and you know i'll let people sort of infer what all that means but you got a t-shirt on tell us about the shirt well uh uh me and my uh, sister's boyfriend he's a vietnam vet and you know we were following the uh the canadian drivers doing their truckers for freedom and then you know they they started the convoy in the u.s and it didn't quite take off like it did up in canada but um i just i went online found a couple of t-shirts and bought it you know to support other canadian drivers and everything because i mean it, it was really important to get that done because it you know Basically, the government, especially the Canadian government, they were basically shutting the trucks down, you know, just because somebody wasn't going to get what they call the jab, you know, the vaccine. And, yeah. Or wouldn't wear a mask, you know. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm one all about freedom, you know. And yeah. That's why I went in the military. Well, and you know, and you know what I, I love? I've got a dear friend. His name is Bud Byers. He's, uh, I think, in his mid-80s now. He, uh, he ran, I think, for 40 years for Yellow. Uh, right. Yellow Freight. Right. He went five million miles with no reportable incident, and uh, he he has told me, you know, Butch, you gotta think of America's truckers as the last American cowboys. Uh, to an to an extent, that and is true. Uh, you you do get some drivers that just love the freedom, right? Right. Yep. How about you? What, what what keeps you in driving? The money. <laughs> the money. Okay. Well, that's honest. Well, uh, you know, my my wife's disabled, and. You know, so it's all on me. I kind of raised my kids, you know. How many children do you have? I got two. Okay. Uh, son and daughter. Okay. My daughter still lives with me, but um, she's independent and yeah. doing her own How thing. about your son? He's, uh, well, like I say, he, he works for Freight Works. Yeah. And, um, he went through the Army, spent almost four years in the Army, and then got out and started driving. And I kept telling him, don't follow in my footsteps. <laughs> You know but, what? We, 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 uh, one thing I've had on my heart to do at some point is a father and son yeah. podcast. So you, you know, talk to him about that maybe sometime. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. No, no, no presumption there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and there are a lot of families, aren't there, that are trucking families. I, we've talked to a number of drivers that talk about they're like the third generation of drivers. Yeah. Do well, you find that? Well, the, the last company I, I worked for, they were around for 90 Actually, when I left, they just celebrating their 90th anniversary. So they've been around a long time. They had four- and five-year generation drivers in the company. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, what's so interesting is when I ask longer-term drivers, like they've been driving 20, 30-plus years, I'll ask them the question, do you remember the first truck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you? Oh, yeah. What was it? It, um, it was an international cab over. Um, everybody always used to call them a corn harvester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's the flat nose international and the, the joke about driving those was you're always the first one to the accident. Cause it's like a bus. You're sitting right there. On you're the right machine, there. You know? you're, you're right there. What was it like driving an old cab over like that? Well, actually, I mean, when I had it, it was almost new. I Did mean, it have air conditioning? Oh yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. The only bad thing about a cab over is, you know, you don't have a nice big sleeper. It's just a little box in the back, and you, you can sit up in it, but you can't really stand up in it. And, but um, then you got to climb up in, in and out. And it, I think one of the big problems with cab overs is the safety of getting in and out because if you, okay. if you don't – I had what they call a cab forward. It was okay. like the, some of the last cab overs they made. And they they actually rode really nice. They rode like a bus. I mean, it just floated. But the older cab overs, you had to really watch your foothold and handholds as you get. How many gears did you have? It was a ten speed. Okay. Yeah, it's just pretty much like we have here. Now, what? what uh, let me ask you this question: Newer drivers, there's some newer drivers that don't know how to use gears. 
What, what do you think about all that? Uh, I don't know if you want my opinion. Okay, well, be be clean and careful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I just I, – I personally don't like the automatics, you know, and I know a lot of drivers that grew up shifting. Once they got into an automatic, they love it. But I, you're still not going to convince me on it. I mean – they're nice because when you get into traffic jams, you don't have to sit there and shift and yeah. push the clutch and all that. But 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 give me make a little argument for why it's good to have gears. I personally feel you're in more control of the vehicle, especially during dry weather or rainy. I mean, during the summer months, it's really not a big deal. Either one's fine, but when you start getting into snow and ice, you know. I feel like the computer doesn't know you're on snow and ice where you do. You know what gear you need to be in, how, you know, where you want to shift down to to be maintain your speed and, and control of the vehicle. But automatic, not so much. <laughs> Interesting. You know, we, we may, I'm just thinking out loud here, we may want to consider creating an old school truckers club or something that's part of the Freightworks yeah. team because I have talked to drivers who will tell me I, I just I only want to use an automatic but there are other drivers like you That's that say a, you yeah. know what I like knowing right I like know it's a little bit like airline pilots my dad was an airline pilot and you know the fly by wire stuff and and autopilot and planes that can take off and land on their own you still have a breed of pilot that says you know what yeah. I'm responsible for what's well, going on and I want the tools. Well, the, air, the pilots, you know, me and a driver I used to run with, he he was a, a air traffic controller for a while and he, and he follows all the air crashes and all that and he's mo a lot of the big air crashes are because of all the new technology that basically the pilots don't learn to fly a plane. It, they learn a computer system and when something happens on it, they have to react on the spot in order to control right. a plane and they don't know what to do by the time they figure it out they're on the ground <laughs> right right well and I, I i know i know too that professional drivers in the main are people that are committed to safety that's certainly right. a high high value here it at great works anyway. <laughs> talk a little bit now you're going to be on the camores route and they're very right yes sir okay yeah. all right so you'll be doing tanker work or no 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 more no, no. Camor, is dry powder. oh that's right dry, yeah. dry powder yeah. okay and and how and so what will your typical week look like? Oh, uh, well, I'm I'm out seven days and back for two. Um, you know, once in a while you might stay out on an eighth or ninth day, but you know they try to get make sure you're back on time. Okay, so typically, just so people know, you'd be going from where to where and when? Um, I start out from the house and um, get a load in North Carolina somewhere, and generally go down to Gulfport. Um, drop that in the drop yard in Gulfport, and then uh, I'll go over to Camores, which is only a few miles away, and pick up my load from Camores and generally run up to Winchester, Virginia. Or um, Is that on 81? Yeah, Winchester's okay. right on 81. and then Or Car Carlisle, which is another hour north of Winchester. And they have drop yards at both, Winchester and Carlisle. And usually I drop that there, and then they'll have a back load um, it may come straight back down to Gulfport or it might have a delivery in North Carolina. Yeah, and so what might your backload be? It's usually, most every time it's been uh, frozen food. Okay. Yeah, they, they have, or milk, they, they have a couple different places right up in Brown Winchester and south of there. That they got a lot, I don't know why, but they have a lot of frozen food warehouses up there. So it kind of works out having a reefer that... Do, do you remember the last time, uh, not the last time, do you remember the first time you backed up a truck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what was that like? I I actually didn't have any problems with it. Um, I Well, I was in high school right when I got my driver's license. I, I used to, have, my dad had a service station, and I used to run a wrecker for him. So I was kind of used to backing up things, and I've had boats through the years. And, and really, as long as you don't let it, uh, freak you out the length of it you know it's it turns and everything the same way so it just you just pay attention to it and and I actually I think in my school I was like one of the only ones I had backed it straight up to the dock perfect <laughs> well Sean you know my one of my first impressions and I just met you earlier this morning is you seem like a pretty steady person are, are you well, try to be <laughs> well you, you see you you see you seem that way and yeah. that, that certainly is a great trait 
to have as a professional driver. So you've been with FreightWorks for five months? Going on five months. Five not, months or so. Quite, yep. Okay. Well, you know, I, you've heard me and we've talked about it say we're not a perfect company, but we're really working hard to get better right. every day. And we keep our promises. And, of course, it's a company that's built on the foundation of truth-telling and honoring our drivers. We know that our most important customer is our driver right. uh, because without that, you, you don't you don't have an enterprise. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's one thing I liked about that's one of the things that drew me to Freight Works was a, a Christian based company. And, and you, you hear a lot of them say that, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Freight Works is up and growing. So, you know, it, it's good to get in with a startup company because I've always gotten into companies, family companies that I miss the good times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, then they got so big that they yeah. kind of lost base with that and then it started going downhill and everybody every time every time I got with a company, the first thing you hear, "Oh, you should have been here 10 years ago." <laughs> so. Well, and you know what the thing I can say and he's a personal friend is uh Josh Farmer, Ray Farmer, Joyce of course, the VP of Operations, the leadership team here are people that really want to care. Right. And, uh, and, and it's because we believe that our word is our bond. And, uh, and so it's, it's a great new adventure. I'm really, really grateful that you came on today. And since you've watched the podcast, you know that I now, <laughs> I now do like a QVC thing. Right. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to get something. So we've got four options here for you, Sean. We've got the Freightworks One Cap. We've got this cap that went over really well at Matt's. It's got the patriotic theme on the back. It's got the leather. Life of the Mile logo. Winter's going to be here before we know it. So we got a beanie with this leather Life of the Mile there. And then we've got a few remaining <laughs> Yeti Genuine mugs. It's got the Life of the Mile logo on one side, the Freightworks 1 uh, mark there. And, of course, this Freightworks 1 studio that we're in right now just around the corner from the driver's lounge. So which of these would you like? Oh, uh, you know... You know my answer is going to be the mug. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go, Sean. That That I is that is it. yours. You know, this is uh, Sean O'Malley. He's one of many professional drivers that we have here at Freightworks. The stories are all as different as the people. Uh, you know, here's an example. Sean, of somebody, you were in the military. You served our country. You've been a driver for 30 years. Uh, it's clear that you're safe. No reportable accidents. We're a company that has the opportunity for you to be a part of it. And if you're interested, all you have to do is go to the FreightWorks website. There's a quick application there. We've got recruiters like Reg and Isaac and others ready to engage in a conversation with you. We also wanna make sure that you know that Life of the Mile delivered by FreightWorks, we believe is one of the faster growing podcasts actually delivered by a trucking company. And we want you to engage. So make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel Listen to all the different audio platforms. Push this out on your social media and help us grow. Because as you do that, we'll be able to keep coming back twice each week. You know what, Sean? I want you to go back and talk to your, your son about the possibility in the next well, couple of months doing a, doing a podcast together, a dad I'm, and son. I'm sure he'd be happy to. He, he's, he's a good kid. <laughs> well, and you know what? Good kids come from good parents. Yeah. And it's clear that you've got a lot of the patriotic values and Oh, yeah. conservative values that have made this country uh, great. Yeah. This is Life of the Mile, delivered by Freightworks. Today's guest has been Sean O'Malley, a professional driver, not here real long with Freightworks, but clearly on the path to success. You can be too. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe. Go to the website, check out all the different features, all the things that Freightworks has as a potential partner in helping you achieve your dreams. We look forward to seeing you every single week, twice a week, here at Life of the Mile, delivered by Freightworks. Thanks so much, Sean. I appreciate you having me on. Great. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode. You know, Life by the Mile, delivered by Freightworks, is one of the newest, largest, and fastest growing podcasts actually produced by a trucking company. Now, we want you to like and share this episode. If you'd like to see more episodes, click here. And make sure that you subscribe to this channel by clicking here. We'll see you there.